Welcome to What a Creep, the show with Margot Donahue and Sonia Mansfield talking about creeps from the past to the present. This is your quick guide to the biggest creeps, jerks, assholes, and losers, the best of the worst. From two nice ladies who want the world to be a little less creepy. Welcome back to What a Creep. This is Margot Donahue, and my cohort in creepitude, as always, is the amazing Sonia Mansfield. Hey, Sonia. Hello, my friend. Hello, my friend. We have a very media-centric episode today. Mm -hmm. We talk about creeps from the past to the present, and we got kind of a mishmash going on here today. We have a creepy news source that we want to get into, and it's going to get us to talking about a lot of different kinds of media and the kind of relationships people have with media. But let me just say at the top of the show, because we're very interactive, we're always looking for ideas for creeps and for non-creeps. So first place you could try to reach us is that Facebook, not our basic Facebook page. That's a place where people go to complain about our language. We use salty language in this program. Yeah, fucking deal with it. We have to say that or else people will complain about our salty language. Yes, it's the first thing they do. It's absolutely. We have a private Facebook group. Like I said, we're much more interactive there. You do have to answer a few questions. Do your best. Just give it your best shot. Just They're promise not, hard. not to be an asshole. There's, yes. there's no math. There's, there's no, no math maths involved. No, no essay division. question. No essay questions. Right. No Enneagram <laughs> bullshit. Like, <laughs> just promise not to be an asshole. But yeah. we're having an active discussion there about podcasters right now. And so this yes. is a great time. Well, we do the show every day at this time, but this is a, this yes. is, it's very fortuitous. We're on Twitter at CreepPod. Long as Twitter exists until Elon burns it into the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? We're also on threads. We're on Instagram. We're on Blue Sky. We will be on Blue Sky. I'm setting that all up this weekend. Sweet. I've got the codes. I'm all ready for us. And... Uh, we have an old timey email. What a creep podcast at gmail.com. We got a great letter um, about a week ago from somebody who was talking about the Daily Mail. And I recommended that because they were saying all the ways that the Daily Mail is creepy. A lot of news sources that we use are creepy. We have to, we, so we're kind of having a moment here where we're going to talk about yeah. what we use, why we use, and whatever. Um, but anyway, what a creep podcast at gmail.com for your suggestions. Oh, yeah. I wanted to mention Daily Fail is a really great podcast where they yes. talk about the stupid shit that the Daily Mail tries to make, yeah. you know, it happen. What is it? Try to make what happen? Fetch. Fetch. <laughs> Sorry. I was thinking Fletch in my head. I had like Chevy, Chevy <laughs> Chase in my head. I'm like Chevy Chase already made Fletch happen, and then John Hamm made Fletch happen. It's great. I got to see that. I heard that was really good. So good. Yeah. Anyway, if you'd like some stickers, send us your email via send us your email. Send us your address to our email, yeah. and then we will drop them in the mail for you wherever yeah. you are on the planet of Earth. We really truly mean that. Sonia, you want to tell them real quick about the website? Yes, you can go to whatacreeppodcast.com and it's everything you want to know about our show, but we're afraid to ask. You shouldn't be afraid to ask, but if you are, you can find everything you need to know there. There are links to all of our past episodes and in each of those little posts are show notes because we source everything we do and we want to give credit to the people that did the dirty work for us, basically. Mm -hmm. So, and if you're looking for a deeper dive, great place to start. We also have a link to our Substack which we'll be getting a new newsletter this weekend. It's going to be a busy weekend for me. And it's uh, free. And it's free. And there's a link to our merch shop where you can get t-shirts and tote bags and face masks and all kinds of stuff. I love the t-shirts. I think they're super comfy. And there's one other thing. Oh, there's a link to our Patreon. You want to tell them about that, Margo? Yes, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. We have our first eight seasons there on the beat in the patreon wall and then we put out two bonus episodes a month where Sonia and i just kind of shoot the shit yeah. what's going on in the news and things like that also at the holidays we send out a holiday card mm-hmm. Sonia made a gorgeous card thank you can't thank wait you. to get that out to y'all so if you're a member of the send patreon us your address yep if you're if you're in the patreon group 
But if you are, um, if money's tight, and we understand there's a lot of people like rethinking their Patreon money. <laughs> What's True going dad. on? <laughs> we, we, we're on Reddit too. Uh, if you could just leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts, five stars would be amazing. But yeah. Spotify or whatever, that would be awesome. Or just tell a friend about the show. That would be really, yeah. really cool. We're just trying to find our peeps. That's all we're trying to do, y'all. That is yeah. all we're trying to do. Just want the world to be less creepy. Just a little less creepy. Just a little. Just a little. All right. Let's begin with you and yeah. what is our subject today. And if, in case you're new, what we do is we talk about a creep and then the other one is challenged to come up with a non-creep. So, Sonia, yes. who, who is your creep today? We are going to talk about TMZ, you. the whole website. So let's uh, trigger warnings. We've got sexism, sexual abuse, and suicide. So take care of yourself. Uh, sources for the episode. I mean, I guess you could go to TMZ if you want, but <laughs> the truth is I try not to go there. Uh, BuzzFeed, The Cut, The Daily Beast, The Guardian, Jezebel, Laney Gossip, The New Yorker, Think Progress, and of course, always Wikipedia. Uh, so we're going to talk about TMZ. And if you don't know what TMZ is, it's a... I envy like a you, by the yeah, way. It's a, <laughs> it's a tabloid news website. It's an organization. They have their website they have the uh tv show they have a webcast uh the show and the webcast they air monday through fridays they're on every day talking about shit you know um the website is known for really breaking the hot goss i love saying hot goss the hot goss about say like mel gibson we've already talked about him on one of our past episodes remember he went on a whole anti-semitic rant when he oh, you know, got I arrested do. for drunk driving, um, they broke the uh, death of Heath Ledger. They did all the stories about Britney Spears back in the day. They detailed every little thing that Paris Hilton and Lindsay Lohan did back in the day. And the big one was the death of Michael Jackson. They were mm -hmm. the first to break it, which meant, uh, I mean, here's the thing. I looked this up, by the way. They confirmed the death through one of Jackson's security guards and broke the news 18 minutes after he stopped breathing. Oh my 18 God. 18 minutes. Isn't that bananas? That's the world we live in now. Yeah, I know. Um, but this, this made TMZ like super huge because every website, every news org in the world had TMZ as their source. Mm -hmm. So there was like, you know, but now you can go to the website and you can just read about like every little thing a Kardashian is doing, whichever one's your favorite. But the biggest story that TMZ refuses to cover is that they're a garbage gossip site. They have a history of misogyny, harassment, racism, and abuse towards the celebrities they cover and their own employees. So we're going to get into it and we're going to start with a little bit of history. So TMZ made its debut November 8th, 2005. It was originally a collaboration between AOL LOL <laughs> and telepictures, which is part of Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in September 2021, Fox Corporation actually bought TMZ for 50 million. Uh, I know I wondered about this. What's the deal? Why is it called TMZ? Yeah. Do you have any idea why? None. Okay. I didn't either. It is an acronym for the 30 mile zone. And that is what they used to describe where they film television and movies in a studio zone. It's an area of 30 miles. And the center is like the intersection of Beverly Boulevard and La Cienega Boulevard. Cienega? Yeah. In Los Angeles. So, and it's called the studio zone. The idea is that they were in the center of Hollywood, basically. The managing editor is someone named Harvey Robert Levin. He is a lawyer who made his name fighting against something called Prop 13 in 1978. Prop 13, by the way, has something to do with property taxes. It's fucking boring. I started looking <laughs> into it and I was like, fuck this. I have other shit to do. So I just stopped. He, had, he did all kinds of TV interviews. He did debates. He was doing op-eds during that time. And then that led to like a legal advice radio show called Dr. Law. And then he was like writing columns for the Los Angeles Times. And then he started doing t more TV appearances. 
And then he got into producing. So he produced things like The People's Court. And I he used created, to love The People's Court. I used to love oh The People's God. Court. He created a show called Celebrity Justice. I never watched that. Um, so he's the managing editor of TMZ. He hosts the TV show. Um, that it's like I've never really watched it, but it's like about their like daily news meeting. I it's guess a bunch of cubicles and people running around. Yeah, right? and they like talk and they talk about what they're gonna cover and they talk about the stories as they come in. Which I'm is working on the Gina that, Jackson story. Oh, cool. Yes, yes it's ba- you know which happens at newspapers there's usually like an editorial meeting and people get together and they talk about what they're covering and they decide what's going to be on the front page and blah 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 um he also used to host a weekly show called objectified on the fox news channel i never again i never watched that by the way i'm not pretending that i am somehow better by saying i never watched it i just never watched it I should also be clear, I didn't even put this in the notes, and I should have mentioned this right off the top. I used to write shit like this. Okay. <laughs> I used to, I worked at a daily newspaper. I wrote a celebrity, like, gossip column called The Scoop. I used to pitch Sonia. I didn't know Sonia then. I used to yeah. send her magazines. I worked in magazines. And I wrote horrible shit about Lindsay Lohan and Paris Hilton. And Brit- I was the worst. I was... And TMZ was 100% one of my sources, my go-to sources. So, again, I'm not better than anyone. I suck just as much as anyone else. So, TMZ launches in 2005. And this is when, like, online gossip was, like, fucking huge. Like, TMZ's whole thing was, like, we are obsessed with celebrities and pop culture just like you. And they're, like, feeding it out there. And not only were they like ruthless in getting this kind of stuff, but they wanted to cater to what they saw as an untapped market for celebrity gossip, which was straight men. So before TMZ celebrity gossip was seen as something that only like women were into. So gossip sites like Perez Hilton delisted Laney gossip. Pink is the new blog. I loved oh my God. Pink is the new blog. Oh my God. Just Jared. Yep. All of these sites, you're know, like, Oh no, you didn't. You know, all that stuff, they were either run by women or queer men. Mm-hmm. And um, and they were very pink and kind of feminine looking. Like, if you go to TMZ, it's dark. It's black. It's white. There's some red in there. It's like very, like, uh, axe bo- it's very axe body spray. Um, and the tone is, like nasty not like fun nasty by the way just nasty um the headlines can be like blatantly anti-female at times um even like the prettiest women they'll post like the most unflattering photos of them it was very much about like knocking celebrities down a peg which you know part of me is like man you get what you get but also they are humans let's right. let's not forget that they are actually humans so the other thing, like all those other websites had, the Pink is the New blog, Prez Hilton delisted, was they're outsiders. They weren't actually in Hollywood, so they didn't have access to things like publicists and police reports and celebrities that TMZ had. And since they were in L.A., they could get the real scoop and they had real access to that stuff. And they also like to pay for that access. That's what I was just going to say. Yeah, they're known for yes. paying for their sources, which is what National yes. Enquirer did for like decades. Yes. Right. Yes. And this is, by the way, this is not stuff that newspapers do. Newspapers right. do not Not pay supposed to stuff. anyway. Yes, not supposed to. There you go. So just a few things they've paid for. Like they paid for the uh, surveillance footage of Beyonce's sister attacking Jay-Z <laughs> in the elevator. Um, in New York, Solange. they paid, yeah, they paid five grand uh, for footage of like the singer Drake, like stumbling out of a strip club and dropping like thousands of dollars on the street. Um, they pay limo services and airlines for client lists. Um, and this information, they use it. There's a reason why like there's like cameras at an airport that just happens to be there when a celebrity is like walking through an airport. It's because that they paid for that information, 
you know, they have been accused of paying police officers and hospital employees for scoops. They pay hairstylists in fancy salons. They pay valets at nice restaurants. Mm -hmm. Like, they pay for this shit. It, it's working for them. They also have like very aggressive tactics when they are when they do show up with those cameras. Sometimes they they antagonize people. They're trying to get a reaction for people. So they'll like try to get pictures of their skirts when as women, it just fucked up. They'll say shitty things to them, try to make them angry, and then post the videos and the pictures of celebrities reacting like that and saying like what an asshole look how shitty they are to our photographers when really right. the photographers were saying horrible, horrible things thing. to them paparazzi's known for that paparazzi's yes. known for like saying anti-semitic things or yes. calling a woman fat when she's coming out of the hospital with her baby like to yes. get a rise out of her husband like they do they've known that for years this is just nowadays yes. they don't need even a fancy camera they could just hold up their phone and they do the same thing yes yeah and they originally had this idea of they didn't want to cover like managed um, celebrity news. So it was like they weren't interested in like weddings or red carpets or award shows, you know, things like they weren't really interested in that. Um, I think that's changed over the years. Um, and they've de definitely developed like tit for tat relationships with certain celebrities. Um, the big famous one was. TMZ actually acquired this footage of Justin Bieber, like making a racist joke and they didn't release it. They held on to it for years. And instead, like Justin Bieber gave them exclusives to things. And again, I missed the Justin Bieber train, but like there was like, they were the first to like get images of his new haircut or when he would like step out with his like new girlfriend, like Selena Gomez or whatever, you know? And that was because it was like, please don't release this thing about me. And, and he gave them which all is what's scoops. done with all the media outlets. By the way, they all yes. do that. They all have that. And that's some old. That's some old school shit. Yeah. Like they're old, like celebrity gossip things from like was like Confidential, the magazine Confidential. It had all kinds of dirt on people. So that's not that unusual. I just wanted to call it out. Yeah, but let's talk about the TMZ as a the. <laughs> The TMZ. <laughs> How old am I? Let's talk about TMZ as a workplace. So in the early years of the website, that's right, Max. That's right. Max is very upset. In the early years of the website, um, it was a lot like a newspaper. Like they worked really long hours. Um, they were expected to like be up at 6 a.m. like East Coast time and work well into the night. 14 hour days. Ugh windows of the office were like blacked out they said it was like working in a submarine um they could go like the entire day without seeing the sun and when they were burned out like and they were like i'm quitting um levin then forces them to hand over like all their notes their source information sometimes hounding them for weeks until they did it mm. which is not super common by the way um, one former employee quit because Levin demanded that a headline on her story refer to a celebrity sister who had a history as a sex worker as a whore. Oh. Yes. Ugh. In May 2013, a former employee of TMZ filed a lawsuit against them and the producer, one of their producers, Evan Rosenblum, for gender discrimination she claimed that she was told multi she was told by multiple employees that TMZ hates women that it favors male employees but she took the job anyway and he routine Rosenblum in particular routinely yelled at her humiliated her called her fucking shit in front of everybody I fucking hate this shit you hand in and also said don't be a girl like when she would get upset mm -hmm. um they would kill stories that she worked on for no reason, or then they would take her story, hand it to a male writer, and then put his name on it and publish it. Um, several employees went to HR and complained about this sort of thing, and they did nothing about it. At the time, TMZ was owned by Warner Brothers, 
mm-hmm. and Warner Brothers HR did nothing about it. Coincidentally, Warner Brothers used to also own the Ellen DeGeneres talk show, and they used mm-hmm. to not do shit about hers either. So, just saying. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, other like male employees used to like make fucking just sexually explicit comments about the women in the office. Um, one ex employee used to like keep porn on like keep porn on his desk for everyone to see again these are just women trying to do their jobs right and you can see that shit at home i mean you don't yeah (sighs) yeah one former employee said that one of the men there was like a known creep he made her uncomfortable all the time he compiled a list about like all his sexual partners and he would like rank them and like talk about them all the time and when she complained to hr they were like you know you should just brush it off or another employee male employee told her like that she should be nicer to him when he says hello and she complained and they were like he's just trying to be nice you know oh so shitty you should you should smile more you should smile more this is exactly what this person was saying um BuzzFeed, which we linked in the show notes, did a huge story about what it was like to work at TMZ and like a ton of former employees talked to talk to them. And they said that TMZ and this is, quote, a cesspit of unchecked abuse of power. It treats women in a demeaning manner. Um, and it's reflected on how they talk about women on the website, too, yep. by the way. Um, they scream at at people who were trying to work, they scream slurs at employees. A former black employee says she felt disposable. She said that Levin constantly mixed her up with like another black woman who worked there, even though they look nothing alike. Like it's just gross. He, he also he would throw around the R word, which we do not say on this podcast. He would also call them morons. Um, talking to you guys is like talking to a room full of special ed kids. You know, just he's a dick. This is a, yeah. You could be a boss uh, without being a dick. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you can be a boss and not be a dick. Um, TMZ was also like one of the websites that decided to go all in on like Trump back in 2015 and 2016. Um, when he was running for president the first time. By the way, he was running for president the first time. There's already, like, he's been credibly accused of sexual assault Mm -hmm. by multiple women. The Access Hollywood tape comes out where he's like, we can grab him by the pussy and, you know, and you can move on him like a bitch and they like you and blah, blah, blah. All this stuff. Yes. And then there's all the stuff about how he's, like, creeping around the, like, Miss Teen USA pageant, like, going into their dressing rooms and stuff. And TMZ decides that, like, they're going to, I don't know, go to bat for Trump. So they ran an exclusive, quote unquote, exclusive from a former Miss Teen USA who like says like, I never had a bad experience with him. <laughs> so you know what that means? That means he didn't do it because she never had a bad experience with him. Hey, it's good old boy Mike. This is good old boy Dave. From Sip Suds and Smokes. Sip Suds and Smokes covers wine, tea, coffee, distilled spirits, whiskey, scotch, beer, cigars. People whose first name starts with Q. Bad fake British accents. And we always take time to make fun of the people of Alabama. Banned once again. It's a one-hour episode that's mildly entertaining for about 22 minutes. I think mildly would be a vast improvement. Well, we do have the only beer show with the Holy Man. We talk about these products and rate them with our unique rating system, like our Suds 5 rating. Do you really have something better to do with your life for an hour than actually listen to this show? What will make them think about it? Well, join us on this radio station, podcast network, or via our Android app. The logic you know, is infallible, so yes, you can't exactly. you tell? 
Yes, he exactly. bragged on Howard Stern how she yes. went into he went into the dressing rooms of teenagers with yes. his kids, his kids. They're adults even then, like the, yeah, like right next to him, and they're all laughing about it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And then you know she's like, he couldn't have done those things, you know. And they run it like this is fucking news, like it's fact, it's fact. Here she said it, it's a fact. Um. Any one of the women who like accused Trump got totally different coverage, of course. Um, like one of them was named Jessica. Je- I'm sorry, Jessica Drake, and they just referred to, said that like, you know, she was doing it all for publicity. You know, um, that she coincidentally like was like launching an online sex shop around the same time, and that's why she was doing this. Like. These things aren't really true. Then they started running stories about Bill Clinton, who, of course, wasn't running for president at the time, but his wife was. And they had another one of their exclusives in which Trump said that Bill Clinton used to talk trash about women during their golf games. Trump would never do that. Bill Clinton was doing it. Oh, my God. TMZ would run stories about voter fraud when it wasn't a thing. You know, supporting all of Trump's bullshit and like TMZ is rewarded for it. Like in the like weeks after taking office, like Trump didn't sit down and do interviews, but he met with Harvey Levin for over an hour in the Oval Office. You know, um, they met to discuss future opportunities, quote unquote. You know, uh, Levin then started working, like, talking regularly. Sorry, I stumbled over that word with Kellyanne Conway, mm-hmm. who TMZ used to say, used to co- they used to call her DC's resident rock star. Oh, my God. <laughs> There's nothing rock star about Kellyanne alternate Conway. Alternate facts. We have alternate facts. <laughs> no. You know, there were all this is when TMZ starts going in on politics like they weren't even political before this. Again, Mm -hmm. it was all about like, you won't believe what Paris Hilton's wearing now, you know, and now it's, you know, or then it was all about like and then, quote unquote, high level Trump sources that were usually Trump himself, um, all about Trump's like anyone who speaks out against Trump, like TMZ will run a story Um one staff member said that, you know, any story that was negative about Trump was just shut down. Like, we're not running that for obvious, you know, it sucks. Mm-hmm. It's garbage. I don't, I think Levin has since changed his tune. He did not support when Trump tried to start his transgen- uh, sorry, transgender ban. military ban. Yeah. Then Levin was like, peace out. But Levin himself, by the way, is a gay man. And it's it just shows like how people will vote against their own in- interests, right? Like Levin's like, well, he's nice to me and I'm rich. He, so well, I don't yeah, care. He has so right? much charisma. Like Megan Kelly likes to say, he's so much charisma. Like, yeah, okay, fine. But that doesn't mean he's he's a leader. It doesn't mean yes. he should be in charge of everything. Yes. It's Jeez. just ugh. So TMZ also, like, they love to slut shame women. Never men, by the way. Just women. Um, So, and they love to take down, like, female victims of abuse. So in 2015, this NBA star named Derek Rose was accused, this is awful, of gang raping an unconscious woman. Like, it's Awful. awful. And... TMZ just like they went to fucking bat for this guy. They just did his dirty work for him and they started publishing like all kinds of stories with headlines like Derek Rose to rape accuser. You're no prude. You hooked up with Nick Young, you know, um, started dragging out like who else she has dated in like, you know, that proves that like she couldn't have been raped because she dated other people. Um, I mean, It was awful. And they ran a whole bunch of other ones. It's just like, um, you know, she's she's just mad at him or Derek Rose to judge unmasked my rape accuser already because she her name wasn't out there. And I'm not going to name her here, obviously. Not in the TMZ stories was the fact that 
Rose and this woman were actually in a relationship for a long time, not a long time, but they were in a relationship. He consistently tried to pressure her into like group sex. And she was like, no, I don't want to do that. Um, In his like deposition, he makes it very clear that he had even broken up with her at one point because she wouldn't have group sex with him. And, and this seems like another important detail when you're talking about consent. This woman couldn't have consented. She had a blood alcohol level of 0.2, which oh, is 2.5 times the legal driving limit. That's wasted. None of these things, none of these things in the TMZ stories. It was all just like she dated other NBA players. Therefore, she's a slut. And it's all this Crash. kind of shit. Yeah, they did the same thing with Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. Like they immediately went to Depp's side. Um reporting that his family hated her, that she was a gold digger. Um, She comes out with photos, you know, of bruises and they're running stories from quote unquote law enforcement sources. They're vague law enforcement sources that, you know, she's exaggerating. They were constantly using Mm. liar in headlines. Um, It's just fucked up. And it got some, it got the writer over at Laney gossip a site I used to love. I Same. haven't read it in a I she's, used to love it. She's a little problematic as well. I think she yes. admits it, but she's she's based in Toronto. Um and she's she's I don't remember. Yeah, she's she said she said some shit. She's yeah, but she's also like oh, I think a former pick me. Yeah. I'm also a former pick me, so I get it. She actually asked a really good question though, which is is TMZ the gossip voice for the men's right movement? Mm-hmm. She may not be wrong. And I think that honestly, I think a bigger brain than mine should dig into that because I think it's a thing. Um I wanted to report on I wanted to share a bunch of things that TMZ in their quest to be first, like, you know, the person who runs to the comment section and writes first, um, they get things wrong all the time. And sometimes there's big repercussions for that. So in 2008, they reported that Miley Cyrus had died. Obviously, she has not. She's doing fine. And, yes. In 2013, they had reported that little Wayne was in a coma and was like going to die any second now. And then he's like tweeting like, I'm fine, everybody. <laughs> He's all, but thanks for the prayers and love. <laughs> like, there's the time TMZ actually got sued because they named the wrong rapper who cut off his penis. <laughs> oh, my God. Some rapper, like, cut off his own penis, but it wasn't the one they named in the story. Oh, my God. It's so awful. It's so awful because the story, I mean, when someone cuts off their penis, Boom. Like everyone ran it, right? It was like BET had it, USA Today, Extra, New York Daily News, like Radio One, everybody. And he's like, I haven't cut off my penis. (laughs) It's still here. It's not legal for me to send you a picture of it, but it's fine. Yeah. They, in 2018, ran a story that Demi, uh, Demi Lovato suffered a heroin overdose. Not true. In March 2019, they said that Michael Jackson's daughter Paris, like, attempted suicide. She did not. Like, she tweeted out, like, fuck you, you fucking liars. Like, um, in October 2022, they said that um, singer and what a creep alum, Jerry Lee Lewis had died. He had not died. He did die two days later, though. I think TMZ might have killed him just to get their story correct. I'm kidding, everybody. I'm kidding. So here's some stories of TMZ just being super shitty. Um, And this is when we're going to talk about suicide a little bit. So if you don't want to hear that stuff, skip ahead. So um, Linkin Park's lead vocalist, Chester Bennington, Mm -hmm. he died by suicide in July 2017. TMZ reported um, some information that was redacted from the coroner's report at the request of the family. I'm not going to repeat it because it's not newsworthy, but you don't do that. That's not what you do. And like his widow, like had to respond like, fuck you to the Los Angeles corn County coroner's office for disclosing the information and TMZ for running with it. They did it again with um, the sweetest DJ 
Um, Avise? Avice? Uh, yes. Avise. Avise. Sorry. Avise. Yes. I said it wrong yes. for years. He was one of my favorites. He was beautiful. Yes. Yes. They did the same thing. They reported details that you are not supposed to report um, that were redacted. Um, and by the way, both both of this, it goes against the CDC's re- recommended guidelines for mm-hmm. when you talk about reporting suicide. You're not supposed to mention how people died. Like that's, you know, and you have rightly pointed out to me multiple times, like it's died by suicide. Like mm-hmm. that's how you talk about it. So fuck TMZ for that kind of shit. Right. Um, in 2013, a D- a TMZ cameraman was outside a club in Hollywood called the Empire Club and a fight broke out and a 19 year old man named Andre Lowe was killed and TMZ just happened to get the whole thing on film and they posted it to the website immediately without family permission. Oh, God. They had to take it down, but that's only after like advertisers and the family were like the family made a big thing about it as they should yes. by the way and and then all these advertisers were like ew we don't like that so then they finally took it down i will say most of the time they do not take their shit down and they don't apologize for things so it must have been a lot of really good advertisers for them to do that uh in january uh 2020 tmz reported on the death of kobe bryant they were the first outlet to do that And they did it before any next of kin had been notified. So like close, you know, so family and close friends learned about it on the fucking news, which is awful. Wolfgang Van Halen said of son of Eddie Van Halen and one of my favorites, Valerie Bertinelli. Mm -hmm. He tweeted out that when his uh, father had passed away, that TMZ had paid off people in the hospital And he couldn't even grieve for 20 minutes, like 20 minutes. And TMZ had the news out. It's pretty fucked up. Um, Kelly Rizzo, Bob Saget's wife, said that when he died, she found out 15 minutes before TMZ broke the story. And most of his family and friends found out because of the, the news leak. Isn't this awful? That's awful. And the reason I want the the reason this even came up for me is because most recently, obviously, actor Matthew Perry died, and TMZ has been accused of paying off police officers for the details. They had they were at his house instantly, like with their fucking cameras, like, and close friends, family learned about his death on TMZ, and their cameras were at Matthew Perry's house. And they took pictures of his parents. No, oh, no. His parents, like in the car. And they're, it's so fucked up. And they immediately posted the photos, like just fucking ghouls. Just, it's ghoulish. That's what it is, for lack of a better word. Mm-hmm. Ghoulish behavior. And I just, I understand that, like, on the internet, everything is like immediate now, now, now. But I think there also needs to be, some decency like can you let can you let the family find out first before you go to press with things like that by the press i don't even know why i said it that way like tmz is a fucking newspaper but like just don't be a fucking ghoul don't be a creep don't be a creep they're being creeps yes so that is tmz a source I'm going to try to avoid from now on when I work on my creeps. It's tough because quite often with our stories for what we do, quite often we look at an article and it says, according to TMZ, and then they go right into it. I mean, they usually get it right, but when they get it, I mean, it's just like... But when they get it wrong, they get it real wrong. And, Mm -hmm. you know, also just... It upsets me that like family would find out about somebody dying from the news. Yeah. Like and then to immediately have cameras in your face is fucked up. Like I mean, like we could talk about Matthew Perry's parents. Like they're not public figures that I'm aware of. They don't deserve to have cameras in their face. Like you could argue Yeah, you could argue, like, 
hey, celebrities, they get, you know, they know what they're signing up for, blah, blah, blah. You know, you, I think celebrities are also humans and we should try to remember that. But like, you could argue that. Matthew Perry's parents aren't that. They don't deserve this. No. That's awful. Like, Kobe Bryant's wife doesn't deserve to like, learn about this shit on TMZ. That's bullshit. It accelerates the whole process. And I know what it's like to get that call that somebody died and then you have to call yeah. somebody else. And it's, yes, it's, you don't know how to handle your. And I can't imagine th- on top of that, it being on the news everywhere. Yes. And then you get a lot of people contact like, is it true? Is it true? Like you, you have just no control of the narrative. And it's just, and it's such an awful moment anyway, but just to like yes. foolishly. Yes. Pick that apart. And also the slut shaming and the misogyny is just yes. ridiculous. Yes. I mean, I could have written another 3000 words about the way they used to talk about Britney Spears, mm-hmm. which we are going to talk about Britney Spears and our next dorking out. So I might save some of my rant, but you know, the way they talk about female celebrities is very different than the way they talk about male celebrities Mm -hmm. and it's fucked up and they are a site i am going to really try to avoid and you shouldn't see any more sources from me from tmz i'm gonna try really hard i'll get confirmation elsewhere thank you yep well good job sonia thank you all right well Let's take a minute. I'm going to talk about our not creep this week. I got to bring it the fuck up. Hold on. Yeah. Bring it the (laughs) fuck up. (laughs) This is a new source that I really enjoy. And we talked about it before in our um, Patreon bonus episodes. But I check it almost every single day. I love their coverage of things. And it's a free, free, free news source. It's Teen Vogue. It's so good. It's amazing. It's been out since uh, 2003. The final print issue was in 2017. And it got a lot of attention because there were reporters in 2016 that started reporting about politics, about Hillary Mm -hmm. Clinton, about the Trump administration. Yes. And specifically about you know, this new generation of voters and how they were responding to all these things that were happening in America. And it still goes back to when people talk about women's media, it's, Mm -hmm. oh, it's about cooking and shopping and boys. And yeah, all that's fun. But we also, you know, you know, just as like nobody gets on a man's case for like being into sports they never right. decide that, that he can't have a, any kind of intelligence about anything else or talk about anything right. else. It's like, or, you know, if you're into the Civil War or whatever, like whatever you're into, you're into. But yeah. women are always co- kind of like reduced. And there's been a couple of reporters that have been on Tucker Carlson's show where he's just been just a total fucking Lauren he, Duca. He was obsessed with her. Obsessed with her. I was like, she's never going to fuck you. She hates you. <laughs> They've, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, but it's, it's also, there's a lot of talk about, I've I've been doing a project recently, and I'm talking to some elderly people that are in the entertainment business. And one of them pointed out to me, we were talking over Zoom, and he goes, Oh, it says on your bio, she, her, her, she goes, what is that all about? And I started talking to him. And it was like, just today, Teen Vogue has a great story about non binary people. And there's an actress, an actor, excuse me, that's on Yellow Jackets, uh, Lev, um, sorry, I'm like blinking on the name. Oh, yes. I I don't remember. I don't remember their name, but I know who you're talking about. Right. And they were just talking about how they had top surgery and then just to just what um, how long they've been considering the surgery and like how, you know, what what does that mean? How did you know? What is nine binary mean? You Mm -hmm. know, how did you explain it to your family, to your friends? And these are just ways of talking about complicated issues in a way that you can understand but also like you know as a young person but also as an older person like you're just yes and it's a great place to kind of see where this younger generation is i like this generation very much these young me too i think they're smart i think that they are they're fighters this is the generation that grew up with unfortunately you know school shootings and 9-11 and 
they've been through some shit. And, yeah. And they, uh, and I love this, like, like I said, it's Teen Vogue, you know. There's one story yeah. that they did in 2017, which was anal sex. What do you need to know? It's like, <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, if that's, you know. Sure. But at, if that's what you're interested in, there are probably things you need to know. <laughs> and the, the thing is, is that, you know, yes, in order to put out a show, put out a, a magazine, whatever, what do you and I do? Like, yeah. You know, sometimes a fact can go through and you didn't, you, it didn't turn out to be true. And it's, I look, I still subscribe to the New York Times, though their coverage of non binary and, and LGBTQ yeah. people and trans issues specifically make me want to scream yes. into the night. Yes. But they get the who, what, when, and where usually correct. I mean, there's just, there's very few places that I've, you know, there's never had been an issue. There's never been an right. issue. So, so, so far, Teen Vogue has been that. Um, but I also wanted to talk about like different podcasts because at uh, True Crime Obsessed, which is, this just happened this week where yeah. it was Patrick Hines who hosted the show. And I'm not that familiar with him, everybody. I'm sorry, those of you that come here looking for that content, because I know y'all are all over Reddit. I read what you put on Reddit. But yes. he had a podcast and it was all about, he's a Broadway kind of person and he's really into the true crime movies and they discussed it. And then there was this whole thing where Turns out he's a bad boss. He screams at people. He treats people badly. Uh, there's a whole, there was a great episode of uh, CWO, Crime Writers On, where they did a Patreon mm-hmm. bonus set, but it's free, where they talked about how he was on their show in 2016 and was like, oh my God, I'm so happy to be here. And there's like four hosts. And then yeah. a few years later, he gets really successful and he has the Obsessed Fest and he would only invite two of the hosts because the other two he just didn't think mattered. Like he's just super dick. right. So wait till people find out how you talk to me. I Mike. mean, if you were to see <laughs> the way Sonia and I approach each other, like, "Hey, how are you? Can we have a discussion about? Is this cool? I just want you to be yes. okay." I mean, that's how we really treat each other. Yeah, it's all. It, yeah, we have like nothing but empathy and compassion for each other, and we're like here for each other 100 percent. there i'm joking obviously right like, we're busy women but we get our shit done and yeah you can we be, can be a boss and not be a dick right it doesn't yeah. have to to be that way so i wanted to give a shout out to crime writers on for offering that on patreon for free we should put out a free up probably before the end of the year yeah, too we'll do that. we could do that we'll do that but it's just yes i mean and uh, we understand like we really appreciate that you take your time to listen to us and consider us yes. as a source and we take that responsibility very seriously yes also there are times when y'all will say talk about this and this and this and there's a few podcasts that are let's just say they have men that are talking about crime that are yeah problematic as fuck and have very toxic fandoms and yes we it's just us we're not a network believe it or not we're not like a, the obsessed network we're pretty yeah it's you and me on we, a zoom call can't, yeah we can't take on those kind of um hardcore fan bases that certain podcasts have mm-hmm. um, or even certain celebrities have yeah let's just say so we might but we do take we take it seriously we do and we do kind of file it away we and we're like you said we're just we keep learning as we're going we we mm-hmm. there's there's expressions i no longer have in my mouth anymore and that's just in the last few years putting this show on yes so we're always trying to do our best and to, just always trying to be like yes. you said lead with empathy we want to be entertaining but we also want to be yes. accurate yes and that's also and, a part of it yeah and we we're curious like Mm -hmm. you know we ask a lot of questions we read a lot of things and we try to put it together for y'all and share what we've learned and if we get things wrong or we say something that is not the right way to say it like i always super appreciate it when people point it out and i Mm -hmm. hope that people know that like it's never coming from a shitty place like right i'm we're both always trying to get it right Always. We understand that the world changes. And, yeah. and I always appreciate, 
like that person I was talking about. Like, can you explain that to me? Because I just don't understand. He wasn't coming from a place like, isn't that stupid? Yeah. He was just more like, I'm not sure I understand. Yes. And that's always, you know, I can always appreciate it's less exhausting to deal with. And like some people's fans, they're just exhausting and they're, yes. they don't want to listen. <laughs> yes. They just will. You're not going to win. There's no winning in that situation. Unquote. So we hope we re- we provide entertainment. We hope yes. that we're informative, you know, and we hope that you know you're having fun and uh, that this isn't medicine. That it's <laughs> yes. <laughs> that it you know, that we have a lot of sugar with our medicine anyway. That's right. So you want to talk about dorking out while we're here? Or- yeah, we're going to talk. Of, speaking of Britney Spears, we're going to be talking about Crossroads this week on Dorking Out. I have to say. I don't know if I've ever seen Crossroads. I think, I've seen clips of Crossroads. I believe it was on How Did This Get Made when I used to listen to that podcast. Okay. Um, and I remember like, good God, this is terrible. But I think it'll be a really fun revisit because it's from 2002. Yes. And yeah. also, not only did I buy the hard copy of Britney's memoir, I also have the audiobook that is narrated nice. by Michelle Williams, which is one of, I've been listening to one every night. I've been falling asleep to it. Michelle Williams I, should be reading all the things forever. Yes, I read that she will probably win a Grammy for this. I, she, I think there will be, <laughs> the Britney fans are serious, y'all. They will be taking to the streets if she's not at least nominated. Yes, because she, it, the clips I've heard, I was like, she's, she's fucking killing it. She's killing it. So we're recording it. Normally we record on Saturdays, but we both have something to do Saturday. So yeah. we'll, we'll get it on Sunday or Monday, but we'll get out to you yes. a little bit later than normal. But yeah, that's the Dorking Out Show. Please send us your suggestions for creeps and for non-creeps. All those places I mentioned before, yes. including our email, whatacreeppodcast at gmail.com. We love it when you use the Andy Potts gif. We got one from Ghostbusters. Yes. Or just choose something that's clever on your own. And Sonia, yeah. where can they find you? You can find me at the Show.com and the Sonia Show on Twitter. As long as that's the thing. Instagram, threads, blue sky, the TikTok. All the places. Where can people find you, Margo? It's at Brooklyn Margo for the TikTok and for the Twitter, as long as that exists. And Blue Sky, I believe. And then everything else, it's Brooklyn Fitchick. I know. Sorry to make it difficult for y'all. You make some choices in 2008, and then all of a sudden, you're like, God damn it. <laughs> that Hence, dude, I picked the Sonya show back in like 2000 yep. or something. So and now I'm, I'm like, that's just the thing. It's just the thing. <laughs> That's All right. right. So in the meantime, everybody, you know, thank you for listening. Join the Patreon if you want to or not. Leave a review if you want to or not. We're easy breezy <laughs> cover girl. <laughs> That's my Danny Pellegrino. Yeah, I reference. love it. Okay, y'all stay safe. Be good. Don't be a creep. Be a creep. Thank you for listening to us talk about creeps. You can follow us at What a Creep Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. But don't follow us too closely. You can email us your creepy stories at whatacreeppodcast at gmail.com. But please keep your dick pics to yourself. <laughs>